two words came to me as I was just thinking and meditating over the prayers and the prophetic blessings that you receive. Number one is fear. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, let me just rebuke the spirit of fear, that God hath not given us the spirit of fear. There's a lot happening in our world today and some of us are already victims of fear financial fear fear of your life fear as a result of all kinds of medical reports but this is the house of god therefore i decree and declare over every one of you here those connecting online that in the name of jesus christ the spirit of fear loses its hold over your life now the spirit of fear loses its hold over your life now I cleanse your mind from the influence of fear in the name of Jesus Christ Deuteronomy chapter 20 please from verse 1 it says when thou goest out to battle against thine enemies and seeth horses chariots and a people more than thou it says be not afraid of them for the Lord thy God is with thee which brought thee out of the land of Egypt verse 2 and it shall be when you are come nigh unto the battle that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people verse 3 and it shall say and it shall say unto them here O Israel ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies it says let not your hearts faint fear not and do not tremble neither be terrified because of them why for for the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies and to save you therefore i decree and declare everything that has overwhelmed you maybe bills maybe a negative report the situation you have found yourself and we found ourselves as a nation the reality of the times in the name of jesus i remind you again and prophetically speak to you that god has gone ahead of you that god has gone ahead of you in the name of Jesus Christ, God has gone ahead of you. Deuteronomy 27 and verse 14. This was a prophetic word that came to my spirit for someone. Deuteronomy 27 and verse 14. Hallelujah. It says, And the Levite shall speak and say unto the men of Israel with a loud voice. Uh huh. Cursed be the man that maketh any graven or molten image an abomination unto the Lord, the work of the hands of craftsmen, and put it in a secret, and all the people shall answer Amen. Please listen. This is a word for someone you are about to compromise and dabble into all kinds of satanic things because it looks like serving God does not pay. And people are already introducing things. Bring this charm to your house. Add this one. After all, it's just a spiritual thing. The Bible says when you make anything that is not of God and put it in the secret in hope that it will help you, the jealousy of God itself will fight. Therefore, I decree and declare every temptation towards compromise to bring any other idol and to bring any other extra biblical practice because you are looking for help i declare in the name of jesus you overcome that temptation now you overcome that temptation now you overcome that temptation now in the name of jesus christ hallelujah praise the name of the lord in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19, Paul spoke over the Macedonian church and he says, But my God shall supply how many? All your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Let me speak that over your life. This week, in the name of Jesus, my God, may he supply all your needs. My God, may he supply all your needs. My God, may he supply all your needs. In the name of Jesus Christ I heard a very humbling testimony that was sent to me I think it's a woman I don't know if she's here but sent me a testimony they were crying already owing and whilst they were just praying and meditating that she was led or so to go out to a shop and she was looking gloomy and she just stumbled across someone who had known her for a long time who she had helped as a primary school teacher he had now become a real estate person. He saw her, identified her, greeted her, and called her, gave her a house immediately. 
Listen, let me speak over your life again. Make sure you believe what I'm saying. May my God supply all your needs. May my God supply all your needs. May my God supply all your needs. For someone, may my God surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Genesis chapter 26 from verse 12. This may be an instruction for someone. The Bible says, and Isaac sowed in that land. Money is not the only thing you sow. You can sow yourself. Dig yourself into knowledge. Bury yourself. And Isaac sowed in that land. But for someone, it can be a prophetic instruction. Listen, let me tell you. I know that people have made all kinds of abuses about finances. But can I tell you? Sacrificial giving is a mysterious principle even in the times of hardship i'm not telling you things that i i that i just read about this is my life that in the time of famine he sowed in that land and received so was received so was received a hundredfold and the lord blessed him verse 13 the Bible says the man works great in famine. He went forward, he grew until he became very great. The famine notwithstanding, I decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ, in this season, while others are saying there is a casting down, let me release a word over someone. Rise to a new level. Rise to a new level. Rise to a new level. In the name of Jesus Christ every time I have the opportunity to speak over your life I must speak favor I wish I have the time to give you personal testimonies last week to this week God did something in my life that almost left me in tears and I said God I know you as a mighty God but you never stop bringing surprises to men this is something Look, let me tell you, when God decides to place his grace upon your life, your life becomes an unending wonder. I want to pray from the depth of my heart. This is my assignment. I'm not preaching. Mine is for you to receive. If you like, you can look around and be doubting. If you like, you can open your heart sincerely and receive and allow God to change your life. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus Christ, May the mantle, the unction, the anointing that distinguishes you and compels men to come and bless you. I release that grace upon you now. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Upon your head, receive it now. Upon your hands, receive it now. Upon your feet, receive it now. One more time. Upon your head, receive it now. Upon your hands, receive it now. Upon your feet, receive it now. I say it again. Upon your head, receive it now. Upon your hands, receive it now. And upon your feet, receive it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. The grace upon your head is for illumination and understanding. The grace upon your hand is for productivity and the grace upon your feet is for direction and speed. Now you understand what I'm releasing. In the name of Jesus, upon your head, let this grace rest upon you. Upon your hands, may this grace rest upon you. Upon your feet, let this grace rest upon you. Koinoni, I declare one more time. Upon your head, may this grace rest upon you extraordinary illumination by the spirit upon your hands may this grace rest upon you and upon your feet receive speed and direction in the name of Jesus Christ it says and I will give you a wisdom and a mouthpiece that your adversary will not be able to gain say nor resist I place something upon you that from today as you speak in the name of Jesus those who have what it takes to bless you may they hear you as you speak those who have what it takes to help you may they hear you
Two more prayers. Two more prayers. Kalish Paru Kaduski Paruda Shalatoskabi. Embragadosha Lakosa Bragadi. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 27 and verse 22, they were with Paul going to a place called Crete, and there was a storm. And the Bible says as a result of that storm, they lost their properties. The ship was about to capsize and they were about to lose their lives. And Paul stood up and said, and now I exhort you be of good cheer for there shall be no loss. This just came into my spirit now. I want to speak to someone from the way things look right now it looks like you have lost money it looks like you have lost your place you have lost the job but i stand under this apostolic and prophetic mandate and i declare there shall be no loss koinonia global there shall be no loss not of your life not of your properties not of strategic relationships there shall be no loss there shall be no loss in the name of Jesus final declaration over your life and I want you to please listen carefully I will always make reference to John 5 the man who was crippled for 38 years he was there lying down when Jesus came to him and said do you desire to be healed he said I have no man that was his problem you may have talent but do you have a man to help you you may have your gift but do you have a man every business needs a man every ministry needs a man there are people who are anointed but those to declare them to the nations they have not encountered them i love it every time i declare to call men because let me tell you men are very relevant when it has to do with your rising and your shining are we together no matter how graced and gifted you are even if you are jesus alone without a man will only leave you in pain and tragedy therefore i decree and declare the strategic men some of you have a lot of men in your life but none of them is strategic enough for your destiny quality strategic men i bring them to your life now quality strategic men i bring them to your life now quality strategic helpers financiers announcers i bring them to your life now hallelujah any major decision you are about to take in life especially your health i want you to think about all those who are connected to you what will happen now if i die some of you for instance you came from non-christian families and you are the only christian who is holding the banner of the gospel while waiting for the younger ones to grow if you are careless with your life and you pass on now what becomes of them when you are thoughtful you will not be careless with your life and your body what happens to you now if you pass on leaving three or four children who are barely in primary school it was not an attack that killed you just carelessness with your health let me tell you this my deliverance over this issue of health came i've shared it with you at the end of the year when i'm doing my personal retreat i gauge my progress against many indices my spiritual growth mental transformation health and wellness relationships finances purpose and all of that and for three years consecutively I found out that the worst performing area in my life was my health. For very justifiable reasons, I could travel for a meeting, return back in the night, return back. I had to make up my mind to say, Mr. Man, if you die and you kill yourself, let it be known to you that you killed yourself. Because I know that God loves me sincerely. He has invested his love and his jealousy upon my life. And I made up my mind. I said no more. Even if it is one step at a time, I will begin to correct it. This is a prophetic word for someone right now. And for somebody, the truth is you have the means. God has helped you. It's time to be serious. 
He that walks with the wise shall be wise. You are in a house where there's smoke, carbon monoxide all the time. And you are just inhaling this with your children. You have the money to move to a better place. Please get out of that place for the sake of the safety of your children. You are in a room. There is a jerry can of kerosene. There is a jerry can of petrol next to your bed. Your nose is directly touching the, the petrol while you are sleeping. And you have 5 million naira, 10 million naira in your account. When you die, what is going to happen to the money? We need to learn to be wise. I have told you the purpose of resources is for efficiency and time redemption. Don't pile millions and billions in your account and be cutting short your days because of selfishness, greed. You have a car of 20, 30 million lying down in your house and you cannot put 100,000 naira to invest in your health. It is not wise. I'm sorry if I'm harsh. We're wrapping up, but I need to say this. I'd rather have a car of one million naira packed and have a body of one billion naira health-wise. It was a wise bargain. You can't be having cars and houses, estates and mansions, and then to invest in your health is a problem. There are many people who cannot spend 20,000 naira they can go to a restaurant, a priority restaurant, and spend 500,000 in a moment. Just proving a point, but for their health. It is often said that health is wealth. A dying man has the desire to get his health back, not his businesses back, not the estates back. One of the greatest contributions you can make in a life, let me tell you, is... Helping them to know God and love God and helping them to live healthy. As much as possible when you are buying birthday gifts for people, try it. Concentrate on their health. Don't buy things you know they will not use. Hallelujah. You see someone whose whose leg is, is tiny like this, you buy you go and waste your money and buy a shoe of over one million size forty five. That person is not even going to use it. Are we together? You can get health products, you can invest fruits, veggies, you can even buy a book about living in health and give the person. You have invested in that person's life. I made up my mind that in the name of Jesus, I will be healthy. It's a, it's a determination. I will be healthy. I will be healthy. Because there is a lot to do for the kingdom. And I know how I stretch myself by reason of the work that I do. Most people see me and say, Apostle, do you rest? I, I may not rest every day. But I've been able to squeeze out a system and at least it's working. Hallelujah. So when you try to call, maybe in the middle of the night, and you say, Apostle, you told us you, you'll be there for us. Remember, I am resting. Remember, I am resting. Because believers have a way of blackmailing you spiritually. They just come up with all kinds of emotions and say, remember, you said, I said I will be there for you. Jesus, who said you'll be there for you? Why didn't you quarrel here? He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. Don't worry, I'll be there for you as much as possible. But when I'm, when I'm resting, I'm resting. It's as simple and honest as that. Gone are the days where people shout and say, you are this, and start sending you scriptures and say, listen, the Bible says a shepherd that cannot... Just delete it and rest, please. Allow people to... You, know, you, should, you should be secured enough to not be bullied by all those, those childish things. You see, when you walk yourself and stretch yourself and don't rest and you die, let me tell you what people will say. Hey, yeah. And that's the end of it. I made this mistake when we started newly. I would walk myself and not rest. My deliverance came when I went to a Catholic cathedral. I saw a crucifix and it occurred to me that I didn't die for any man. Now, I love people. Don't get me wrong. But it was not my face that was on that crucifix. So I will be there for everybody as much as I can.
There are pastors and leaders who have thrown their families in disarray, thrown their health in disarray, thrown their finances in disarray, all in a bid to serve people who will largely not be grateful. Love people, but don't be a fool. In the name of Jesus. So seven keys I have given you. Let's do a recap and then we pray and I speak over your life. Number one, God's desire and plan. Listen carefully. That God's desire and plan for all of us is to walk in health, vitality, and longevity. I have a whole series on the healing ministry. That's for next year. Hallelujah. And number two, that the Bible clearly says that our lives can be cut short if we do not comply with the scriptural conditions that make for longevity. The Bible shows us that a man's life can be extended, prolonged, and a man's life can be cut short. Number three, we said that the Bible reveals that in many regards, God is not responsible for the premature departure of the saints. Number four, we said how that Satan is that thief that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And that primarily, the two or three tools that through history, we have seen that have been his most effective tools in destroying people. One, accidents. Two, sicknesses and diseases. And then number three, spiritual issues. Issues that relate to dreams and all kinds of oppressions. I now began to give you a few keys. Seven of them. Number one, we said you must submit to Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life. Number two, we said you must have the fear of the Lord. That the fear of the Lord has longevity connected to it. Number three, your words. Scripture-based confessions. That you must learn to speak words of life, words of faith. Number four, honor to parents. Honor generally, honor carries within it life. Honor to parents, both spiritual and physical. Number five, we said engaging the mystery of the communion. The mystery of the communion with understanding. When you engage the communion with understanding, it has within it longevity. Number six, we said you must master the art of spiritual warfare. Prayer and intercession, warding of the arsenals of hell and establishing the victory that is in Christ over your life, over your body. And then number seven, we said walking in wisdom. Wisdom as it is, pertains your living, wisdom as it pertains relationships, wisdom as it pertains the matters of health, and most importantly, wisdom as far as feeding your food, nutrition, your vitality is concerned. These are irrefutable keys, ladies and gentlemen. Irrefutable keys. Irrefutable keys. Hallelujah. And of course, to cap up everything, the power of prophetic speakings and declarations over your life. Hallelujah. He said, I've been commanded to bless. I have blessed. And it can, they cannot be cursed. So the power of the blessing, prophetic decrees over your life. It is very powerful. I am a product of the blessing of many people. Almost every elderly person I have seen. When I see elderly people that truly have been able to demonstrate health and longevity, when I meet them very quickly, I'm looking for a way to connect. In the name of Jesus, that is son, can you speak over my life? I remember our father, Bishop Onubogo. I don't know how many times I've told him, I said, from the depth, the bowels of your spirit, 84 years, only gone to the hospital once. In 84 years, with his wife, 74 years, both strong and alive. Ah! I speak life. You're gonna leave, oh my brother, 
my sister. I speak like you are the head and not the tail. You will prevail. I speak like, help me. Don't give up the fight for your life. You will live and not die. That if Christ tarries at 84 years, surrounded with your children and your grandchildren, you have secured the covenant of life that nations will come to you to say teach us the ways of the lord what did you find that has kept you in the midst of the arrows that fly by day the noisome pestilences the destruction that wastes in noonday you have been able to have access to this mystery and you will tell them this is it if you are from a family that has suffered untimely death this is your chance. If you are from a family where maybe things you have been threatened, you do not even know who is next now. Because it looks like death just comes to pick people like an eagle coming to pick something on land. You can be that voice of deliverance by reason of this teaching. I shall not die, he says, but live and declare, I shall not die. You are a minister of life. A minister of life. A minister of life I made up my mind that by the grace of God and as much as God grants me grace that all who are connected to me by natural descent that by the grace of God they will have the honor of tasting long life I engage every one of these keys I believe it with my heart I believe it Jesus the resurrection and the life now remember let me tell you again before we pray challenging the spirit of death and contending for longevity is not out of fear if you fear death you are already defeated you cannot live your life being afraid god forbid but if i transit right now the only thing will be that i did not finish my assignment but as far as victory is concerned no that one was secured a long time ago i will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for us. He said, what shall separate us from the love of Christ? Is it famine? Is it death? I have come near this thing called death many times and by his mercy and by his spirit I have been preserved. I can tell you ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. The greater standpoint of victory is not the fear of death. The Bible says, and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage. There are many who have transited in glory today. And I can tell you, Paul said, for, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. We are not afraid of death. Oh no, not at all. Not at all. That was already settled. When we came and told Jesus, take everything, we meant it and we are glad. Hallelujah. But as far as this is concerned, if I were dead, you would not hear what you are hearing now. Paul said, I desire to go, but I found out to stay is expedient for you. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. I shall not die. Please rise up on your feet. Everyone stand, please. Everyone stand. Let's minimize movement. We're going to pray and then I make an altar call. Just one prayer point tonight. Father, I obtain grace. In the name of Jesus, obtain grace to walk in keeping with these keys that you have revealed. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Pray from the depth of your heart. The untimely death that took my brother, my sister, my father, my mother, my relatives. The untimely death that keeps sweeping people across my territory. I decree and declare that I'm free from it. Through knowledge shall the just be delivered. I decree and declare I have no covenant with death. I obtain grace. Someone is praying. Grace, 
grace, grace. Mention the various areas, the various keys you can remember and receive grace from heaven. A global family, are you praying? Make sure you are praying from your room, your office, wherever you are connecting from. In the name of Jesus, I shall not die. In the name of Jesus, I shall not die. Not out of fear, but my longevity is important for my life, my family, the program of God. And for as long as my assignment remains, I reject death by the power of the Holy Spirit. I submit to the Lordship of Jesus, the resurrection and the life. I obtain grace to walk in the fear of the Lord, obeying His precepts and living by the truth of Scripture. Someone pray. I decree and declare that from tonight, my words will only minister life and health and vitality. Pray. Oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, where is your victory? No covenant with death. No covenant with untimely death. The fullness of my days I fulfill. In the name of Jesus. The fullness of my days I fulfill. In the name of Jesus. The fullness of my days I fulfill. In the name of Jesus. According to Psalm 118 and verse 17. I shall not die. I shall not die. I shall not die. I prophesy by the power of the Holy Spirit. I live. I shall not die. I live and declare the works of the Lord. I shall not die. I shall not die. In the name of Jesus. Not by accident. Not by sickness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me add one more prayer request for you. I want you to declare over your physical body. Prophesy longevity from your head to your toe. I want you to call your organs by name if you can. And begin to declare. In the name of Jesus. My blood is cleansed by the spirit. No killer disease around my blood. My system is sanitized. By the power of the Holy Ghost. The various organs and systems in your body prophesy it will not deteriorate with age. For the Bible says, they that be planted in the house of the Lord, that they will flourish in the courts of our God. That in old age they will be fat and flourishing. Pray, my eyes will not go dim. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke arthritis. I have strength and vitality. No cardiovascular diseases in the name of Jesus Christ. He keepeth his bones so that none is missing. I have a covenant of peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken. My eyes are bright as the sun in the name of Jesus Christ. I have the hearing ear, the seeing eye. Strength to walk in the name of Jesus. Strength to walk. He empowers me with strength from heaven, like hinds feet. My natural strength will not be abated in the name of Jesus. As my years, so shall my strength be. Perfect vitality in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please hear me. You know someone who is struggling with his or her health? Next week is our final miracle service for 2022. It's not the final service, but the final miracle service. We don't do miracle services in December, although all the services in December, by the grace of God, 
will take time to praise God, but I want to really take the time to minister to people. Please listen. I want to charge you and challenge you by the God of heaven. Everybody you know who is trusting God to touch their bodies, their minds, their finances, their work with God, I want you to draw them and tell them, come and experience the mighty hand of God. We are going to be taking time to really pray for the sick. Because of time constraints, sometimes I live and I really feel bad in my heart because I just feel that more could be done, particularly for people who are sick. Some of these people, there is no other solution. There is no other way if God does not help them. Hallelujah. So let me declare over your life, and I want you to believe, I have received myself the blessings and the grace of fathers and elders. You've heard about my encounter in the West and many of the fathers by the grace of God and by the privilege of his hand. Almost all the major fathers of faith that I extended in age. I've had the honor of having them pray and among the many things I requested was grace for long life because this journey is still far. And you see, when people have something, they can give. Hallelujah. Some of you have the privilege of having parents that have lived long. Let me give you an advice. Package a gift. Don't go empty-handed, put in your hand in your pocket and say, Daddy, bless me. If I'm your father, I'll tell you, leave this place. You have not learned. When it was time for Isaac to bless Jacob and Esau, bless Esau, later would bless jacob he said go and make me venison i hope you know that where they got the food jacob's food was just at his backyard so it was not an issue of luck he said go it is a law go and package a seed package something that gives your parents joy or anybody you know that god has helped and trusted with long life and tell them in the name of jesus i believe in this grace and i pray that if you will just speak a word over my life and you will be surprised you will be surprised hallelujah yes i have seen strength and vitality in old age i have seen people strong they can they can almost play football a man who can play football in his 80s there are young people right now 32 35 40 42 43 and it's almost as if they cannot they lift a bucket of water and they fall together with the bucket such as i have you see so these things you see is not just something you invented longevity that comes from scripture backed up by the heartfelt blessing of those that have spoken over us the times are evil ladies and gentlemen Security can only do so much for you. You need an immunity that is above and beyond this realm. Secured by the word of God. Secured by the immutability of his covenants and his counsel. In the name of Jesus I decree and declare. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. Because God has allowed us to teach this. Over the body of Christ. To reintroduce this grace for long life again over the body of Christ. I declare the fullness of your days. Fulfill it. The fullness of your days. Fulfill it. Every pattern you have seen that is now beginning to manifest in your life and you are afraid. Will I die? Am I also going to go like that? By reason of tonight's teaching, I cut you away from it forever. The spirit of untimely death that is sweeping across Africa, across Nigeria, destroying brilliant minds, bright potentials before their time. I decree and declare you are covered supernaturally. We are approaching the festive period and naturally people travel some by sea some by air some by land and then some by any other means people will travel within the country and across the globe i decree and declare no evil report shall be heard about you 
And let's agree right now for anyone connected to you who is currently in the hospital or struggling with any sickness or someone who came here for service. Let me stretch my hands over you before we wrap up. Every devil of sickness that followed you here, it does not matter what name it is called. In the name of Jesus, be healed now. Be healed now. Be healed now. Be healed now. I command your blood to be cleansed now. I pray for every doctor here and every doctor hearing me, every lab attendant, every paramedic. We empower you afresh as instruments of God's mercy. Receive supernatural wisdom and unction as to attend to patients. In the name of Jesus Christ. Under your watch, the patients will not die. In the name of Jesus. We pray for those who are connecting right now from various hospitals, clinics, various places of health, maybe rehabilitation centers. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare, may the life and the power of Jesus surge through the television and touch them right now. In the name of Jesus. And not only are you a bona fide recipient of longevity, I release you as an agent to transmit the same. That beginning from tonight, whosoever you declare upon, as far as longevity is concerned, may heaven back it up. For in Jesus' matchless name we pray.